today I'm going to get you up and running with PS1 or PlayStation 1 through RetroBat. Before I continue doing this tutorial, just make sure to hit notification videos if you like, and also check out my new memberships feature, which you can find on my channel. So let's get on with this. What we're going to do first is just go into RetroBat, and I'm going to start off this setup guide with a little tip. So once you're inside RetroBat, Press your buttons, go to main menu. In my case, I've got this set up as start button on my PlayStation 3 controller. And if I go to game settings and go right to the bottom, I'll go to missing BIOS check. And instead of using the controller for this, which is slow, use your cursor on your keyboard, which tends to be a lot quicker finding the missing BIOS than your controller does. So make sure you do this. So once we come across PSX, you can see here, it needs five of these PSX BIOS files. So we got SPH 1001, SPH 5500, and so on. So there's five of those in total. So once you establish which BIOS files it is you need, you're pretty much good to go and make sure it is the correct BIOS files. Otherwise, games might not load or just not be right. So let's look into this. So what we're going to do is go into RetroBat to start with. I right click on the shortcut for easiness and just select open file location. From here, there's a BIOS folder. So this is the structure of the BIOS folder. So some systems have subfolders where you drag BIOS files into and some don't need it. So what I'm going to do is just drag my BIOS files, which I extracted from my PlayStation consoles inside of here. So they're loose and they're not actually within a folder, as you can see what I'm doing here. So next thing I'm going to do is come back out of here and go to ROMs. In the ROMs folder, just scroll down until you find PSX. Uh, why it's called PSX is a mystery. It's just one of those things which have caught on over the years. So we're going to drag our game inside of here. And the file extension for games really is going to be .bin and .q. It will accept other file extensions, which you can find in batch UI. So system list. And if you just go onto system at the top, you'll come across PSX, which is here, and your file extensions, it accepts, are listed here. Uh, like I say, I'm using a .q in .bin, it's extracted from my PlayStation game. Uh, also popular formats will be ISO and .chd. So we're all good to go. So let's open up RetroBat itself. And you should see your PlayStation icon now appear. It's got no cover art. So I'm going to go back into main menu by pressing start on my controller and go into scraper and just scrape the artwork and preview video for this. And once that's done, it's going to ask you to update. So do this by going to game settings, update game list and press yes. And that's it, we're good to go. Now, if we press select or whatever button it is you use to go into view options, Go down to advanced system options and from here we got a selection of free retro watch cores and duck station i'm going to leave this to auto for now and i'm going to enter the game so if you don't have the correct bios files in place it won't boot up or it will give you warnings and as you can see i've got bezels enabled if you've not checked out how to enable this then go on to the my setup guide to enable bezels and get this for yourselves And as we can see here, it's very pixelated and parts of the screen is missing, but I'm going to show you how to really clean this up in a minute, getting rid of that pixelation and making this really good quality. Uh, I mean, really good quality. You can make these all PS1 games look superb. So there we go, highly pixelated. So let's back out of this just to use hotkeys to go back into the retro back front end. And from here, I'm going to go into view options by pressing select, advanced system options. And what I'm going to do here is just go to shader set. And for this, I'm going to just leave this to auto for now. Game aspect ratio, I'm going to change as always to 16 by 9 to give it a stretch screen. Integer scaling. 
keep this one to on and that's going to really boost up the performance and how it looks of your game vertical sync yes that's going to reduce screen tearing internal resolution now this is the point where your game is really going to come to life the higher up you go on this the more stress it's going to put on your computer. Although PS1 games aren't too demanding on PC hardware, so you can experiment with this one by all means. I'm going to just go to 16 times on this. And to make this even better in the 16x9, I'm going to enable the widescreen mode. So under Advanced Settings, Video, and Widescreen, I'm going to turn this to Yes. And just below that, under Game Aspect Ratio Widescreen, I'm going to put this one to 16 by 9. If I back out of this, let's open up the game again. And here we go. So as you can see, it's much cleaner, much sharper, and that pixelation of that, it looks pretty fantastic for a very good one. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And that's one of the first PlayStation 1 games I played back in the day. And I think it's the best James Bond game on the PS1. It's just a really good game. And not a bad film as well, the second Pierce Brosnan film. So let's go back to Advanced System Options again and make this look a little bit better. So if we go to Visual Rendering, we can even change the anti-aliasing to take away jagged edges and also texture and filtering. So we got lots of different options here for PlayStation 1 through Retro. Back. So again, the further up you go on the anti-aliasing, the potentially it's going to put strain on your hardware, but let's give this a go. Texture filtering, I recommend Bolinear. So let's just go back into this game with anti-aliasing. Now it's 16 times on by linear filtering. As you can see here, the text is no longer jagged on the edges like it was a minute ago. That's the anti-aliasing doing this. And as you can see, the snow on the mountain just there, very defined stuff. And this is, everything is set onto max settings. For those out there who know this game or you understand what PS1 games used to look like, then you can see this is a massive, massive difference. Now, for those of you who want to use Duck Station on this, what we're just going to do is go to Advanced System Options. Emulator, if we go to Duck Station, go to Back, Back Out, open up the game. We now got an option to install Duck Station, so let's just install this. So once you get those missing BIOS file errors, that's perfectly fine. So what it's going to do is open up the Duck Station standalone emulator, as we can see just here. What we're going to do is just open up our games through Duck Station. So let's add game directory. So my game is located inside my Retrobat installation. So I'm going to find this by going to C drive, Retrobat, and it's located under ROMs, of course. And if we just scroll down until we see PSX, I'm going to just highlight this one, select folder, and yes. And there we go. So that's now in place. But we also need to set our BIOS files inside of this duck station. So if we go to settings, BIOS, what we're going to do next is change this part just here. Because where we put our BIOS files a minute ago isn't actually located in here. So what I'm going to do is just go to browse for this. And I'm going to point this into where my BIOS files are for PS1. So if I go back to my C drive again and I look for Retrobat and what I'm going to do is just highlight BIOS close so that's your BIOS files now in place let's close this down 
So once you've configured what I've just done through Duck Station standalone, it's just another case of going into Advanced System Options and making sure Duck Station is selected. And then you can just configure your video settings very similar to what I did just a minute ago. So, you know, have fun doing that. Some settings will work, some won't. It's a case of trial and error. So that's it then for my Retrobat PS1 setup guide today. Uh, like I said at the beginning of my video, make sure to hit notifications to get my latest content on Retrobat and other retro content that I update almost daily these days. And also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And just remember, do me a favor and subscribe if you like this video. Stay retro!